Hey guys, this is Cooking with Steven and Jacqueline. Today we're going to throw some fish steaks on the grill and make some cheesy smashed potatoes. So let's sit back and enjoy the ride. Well, our first pit stop today is to go and season our blue marlin fish steaks and here's our ingredients. For the barbecue blue marlin fish, you will need 3 slabs of blue marlin fish steaks, 1 to 1 and a half teaspoon of SVG, 2 tablespoons of green seasoning, 1 to 1 and a half teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. And to doctor the barbecue sauce, you will need half cup of barbecue sauce, 3 tablespoons of honey, 1 teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, 1 teaspoon of red chili flakes, and 2 to 3 tablespoons of water. Hey guys, today we're going to grill up some fish steaks. I'm using a fish called Blue Marley, which is great for grilling. And also it has only one center bone, which makes it a lot easier for eating as well. Here I just got me some paper towels in which I'm going to dry off any excess moisture on both sides of our fish steaks. You do not need any extra moisture on this one and you will see why in a moment. I'm going to first start off seasoning my fish steaks with some SPG which is just kosher salt, black pepper and granulated garlic. You just want to sprinkle a light amount because this is the first level of flavor. And for the next layer of flavor, I'm going in with some of our Trini style green seasoning. And this is why I said that we do not need that extra moisture because the green seasoning adds a lot of moisture to the fish. I also have an earlier video on how to make this green seasoning. I will have a link to it in the description box and also in the iCards above. But if you would like me to upgrade the video, please let me know in the comments. As you can see, I'm not using much of that green seasoning because you don't want it to overpower the taste of the fish. And last but not least, we are going in with a bit of our homemade Cajun seasoning which will add a bit of heat and also another level of flavor. The paprika in it will also add some nice color to our fish as well. And this is why I did not add much SPG in the beginning because our Cajun seasoning has some salt in it as well. You want to make sure that you get a light enough coating over your fish. Now it is time to just gently make sure and pat that seasoning in. You want to flip over your fish and repeat the same process all over again. So I'll bring you right back when we have gotten our fish all seasoned up. So now that our fish is all beautifully seasoned up, we're going to put them back into a bowl and set this in the refrigerator and let them marinate for a couple hours. In the meanwhile, we're going to kick up a store-bought barbecue sauce. Well, here I have one of our local store-bought barbecue sauce. I'm adding half cup of this into our bowl. By the way, this is a spicy barbecue sauce that I'm using. And next, I'm going in with some of our local honey, about 3 tablespoons to quarter cup. And this will add a bit of sweetness to our spicy barbecue sauce. Oops, senior moment here folks, I have forgotten my red chili flakes, I am going in with 1 teaspoon and this will help to add a bit of heat to our sauce. And for a bit of acidity to help along with the sweet, I am going in with 1 teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And to bring all those flavors together, we are just going to add a whack of our SPG which is salt, black pepper and granulated garlic. Now you want to give this a good old stir and make sure that all those flavors marry together. To thin it out a bit, I'm just adding about 2 to 3 tablespoons of regular water. Give it a good old mix to make sure that everything is properly well incorporated. Now you want to give your sauce a taste to see if there's anything needed in it again. But it looks like I'm on point here. So I say it's time to go get our grill set up and grill us some fish sticks. Well, here I have my grill with the coals already lit. As you can see, the coals are on one side of the grill. This is to create a two-zone cooking area, a hot and a cold zone. Also, I'm going in with a few small chunks of post oak. This is to get a bit of smoke on our fish steaks. So I'm going to place them on the hot coals. Well, here I have a bit of palm, which I'm going to lightly spray on my grill rack to prevent any sticking. You may not have to do this up depending on the kind of grill rack that you have. So guys, I say it's time to throw some of our fish steaks on the grill. 
Oops, sorry about the footage there guys, I got a phone call, but you want to make sure and place your fish opposite the hot coals so your fish can take in a bit of that smoke. Well, this is about 20 minutes into the cook and it's time to give our fish steaks a flip. You want to be gentle when doing this. So guys, I hope you can get yourself some blue marling fish steaks. This is definitely the fish for grilling because it has the perfect texture. In the meanwhile, we're going to be warming up our honey barbecue sauce that we made up earlier on. So just place it to the hot coals and let it do its thing. As you can see, I have already started sourcing our fish and this is just another added layer of flavor. And if you have been watching me for a while now, you know it's all about those layers of flavor. Now that we have done this, let's put the cover on so that sauce can start to get sticky all over that fish. And in a miracle of time, 10 minutes has gone by, so it's time to flip over those fish steaks and let's hit them up with some of that honey barbecue sauce. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the post notifications for more. So guys, while I'm applying the sauce to the fish steaks, I would like to let you all know that this step is optional of course. You may choose to leave out the sauce, but this is how we like it in our household. And remember guys, when you're cooking, don't be afraid to try different flavors. It's all about your choice. Here I'm moving the fish steaks a bit closer to the hot coals because I want to get that sauce nice and tacky. And we are going to let this ride for about another 5 minutes. So guys, another 5 minutes is up and our internal temperature is reading at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that means it's time to take our fish steaks off of that grill. So now that we're getting off the last fish steak, we're going to carry this inside tinted in foil and we're going to make a side to go with this dish. Well folks, for our second pit stop today, we'll be making a side called cheesy smashed potatoes and here's our ingredients. For the smashed potatoes, you will need one and a half to two pounds of baby potatoes, one and a half teaspoon of black pepper, one and a half teaspoon of kosher salt, one and a half teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoon of dry parsley, quarter cup of olive oil, two tablespoons of parmesan cheese, half to three quarter cups of grated cheddar cheese. Here I have my pot of cold water, which I'm going to add my baby potatoes, which I've washed thoroughly. You want to add your potatoes to cold water, then turn on the heat. This way, you will get even cooking throughout your potatoes. While our potatoes are boiling away, we're going to start by prepping our baking sheet pan by adding a little bit of oil. And for the cooking tip here guys, I'm using a paper towel to spread that oil. In that way, my hands would not get oily. The reason for putting the oil on the baking sheet pan is to prevent your parchment paper which I'm laying down to keep it in place. And for the record guys, I am by no means a chef, I'm just a home guy who just likes to cook. Now that we have gotten our sheet pan all ready, it's time to start adding our potatoes and smashing them. And for smashing the potatoes, I'm just using an ordinary whiskey glass to do this. And in case if you went for a snack, I'm going to do it one more time and then we're going to speed it up a bit. While doing this, you want to have your oven preheating at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that we have gotten all of our potatoes all smashed up, it's on to the next step. And for that I have a blend of black pepper, kosher salt, garlic powder and dried parsley. You want to sprinkle a generous amount of your blend. And also if you are like me, I add a little extra black pepper on it as well. Now you want to take your olive oil and drizzle it all over those smashed potatoes. The olive oil will help with the crispiness on the outside of those potatoes. And now that we have finished drizzling our oil all over those potatoes, it's time to put them into a 450 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes or until that underside is golden brown. And in the miracle of time, 50 minutes is up and it's time to flip our potatoes. And there you can see Buddy in the background. Well, it's time to flip over our potatoes. And as you can see, as I flip the potato, you can see the golden crust that I am talking about. 
The only thing different I might do next time is not use the parchment paper because I find it a bit difficult to flip the potatoes. And now that we have gotten most of our potatoes flipped over and I'm doing the last one, we're going to repeat the following steps. Here I have that blend of black pepper, kosher salt, garlic powder and dried parsley. We're going to sprinkle a generous amount all over this. And also we're going to add a little bit of extra black pepper. And as for me, I just like a little extra black pepper on my potatoes. Well now it's time to drizzle some of that olive oil on those potatoes once again. Well, we have a few extra steps to do on this side of our potatoes. Here I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of Parmesan cheese on each one of those smashed potatoes. Here I have some regular New Zealand cheddar cheese which I grated. I'm going to be sprinkling a little bit on each one of those smashed potatoes. So guys, this is my first time making smashed potatoes. I did a bit of research and this was the recipe I came up on and I decided to put my own twist to it, which is adding that cheddar cheese. And now that our potatoes are all cheesed up, it's time to put it in that oven for about another 10 minutes or until the cheese starts to melt and then we have one more step again. Well here's our potatoes where the cheese has started to melt. Here I have a bit of chives which I gave a rough chop and I'm going to give it a sprinkle on each one of those smashed potatoes. And we are going to put this back into the oven for about another 10 minutes to help bring all those flavors together. Well, 10 minutes has gone by a few seconds for you guys and here are our delicious, cripsy, cheesy mashed potatoes. I will have the both recipes for the fish and the cheesy mashed potatoes written down in the description box below. So let's get all this plated up, fasten our seatbelts and get ready for a drive by. Let's go! So boys and girls, here's our grilled blue marlin fish steaks and cheesy smashed potatoes and it was so tasty i hope you all enjoyed the video like comment and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post notifications for more videos see you all on our next cooking journey and we're out until next time